Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our regular scheduled council meeting for August 7, 2023 at 6 p.m. Uh, good evening, council, good evening. our uh, fine audience here and our administrators. Uh, Ms. Burner, if you would call us, please. Yep. Mayor Lowry. Here. <clears throat> Vice Mayor Grimm. I'm here. Councilman Bond. Here. Councilwoman Eggleston. Here. Councilman Cook. Here. Councilman Lindsay. Here. Councilman Rogold. Here. Seven members present. All right, thank you very much. And tonight's invocation will be done by Fire Chief Trump. Oh, Lord, we thank you for the day and the many blessings and new places. We thank you for the city, the state, the dinosaur, the life of the world, the design, the vessel for the spawner, the food commission, and the use of some new place. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> all right, moving on, we'll need action on the regular uh, council meeting minutes for July 5th, 2023. Second. Any discussion on those minutes? Second. When you're ready, Ms. Turner. All right, Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Stain was not present. Councilman Rodewald. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Those minutes are accepted 601. And so moved on 717. The following meeting on July 17th. Mr. Lindsay. Second. And second by Mr. Bond. Any discussion on those minutes? Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rodewald? Abstain was not present. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Those minutes accepted 601. All right, thank you. And then dropping down to city manager's report, Mr. Kitko, sir. Thank you, Mayor, members of council, <clears throat> members of the public, good evening. Uh, there are no departmental reports as those will be at the next council meeting. Under B, informational items. Uh, under discussion topics, the trash recycling services bid is out. It, was at, it will be advertised 731, 87, and 814 with the bid opening being 821 at 1015 and then uh, we'll get uh, dissecting those once we open those. Uh, legislation could be introduced at 821 if everything possibly pans out and everything's agreeable. A new planning director has been hired. Uh, he is in the audience tonight. If you'd like to, we'd like to welcome uh, Brian Moore as our planning director and also doing our code enforcement. Please stand up, do a, you know. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. Um, under liability insurance renewal, um, updated schedules have been sent. Uh, we're waiting on quotes for on our premium. They'll be coming back to us soon. And then upcoming legislation, liability insurance renewal, capital improvement plan, and a donation bin ban. And that is all I have under informational items and the city manager's report tonight. All right. Council, any questions for Mr. Kitko? Right. Thank you, Mr. Kitko. You are welcome. All right. <coughs> uh, moving on to um, commit or uh, comment uh, comments from the public. If you have any questions or comments, please go to the podium. We'll need your name and address for the record, and please try to keep it for five minutes. Anything, this will be the time. <coughs> My name is James Lighty. My address is 1729 Liberty Road, New Carlisle. Mr. Mayor, council members, last month we had a barn burned down on our property. And uh, when the call went out for assistance, uh, numerous departments responded to the call. The first that got there was chief trustee with the New Carlisle Fire Department. We lost the barn and everything in it but there, our house was very close to the barn along with our garage and another outbuilding, and they were all spared. They kind of melted away a little bit, but they were all spared. I, we've had literally an army of investigators and adjusters and fire marshals descend upon us over the past month, and everybody that comes comments, we can't believe that house didn't burn up. 
And so, Chief Trustee, I wanted to come and say thank you for the decisions you made as soon as you got there, the skill of the department. I truly believe had one thing gone differently other than what you did, I don't think we would be staying in our house now. I think it would also be, it would have been a loss. So I just wanted to come and say thank you so very much. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lighting. Glad to, to see that everyone uh, yeah, is safe as well. So. Yeah. Just lost a bunch of stuff. Yeah. My stuff can be replaced. That's right. Have a good evening, sir. Thank you. All right. Anyone else? All right. Moving on to uh, resolutions. Ms. Burner, if you would, please. Just a second here. I lost. Okay, here we go. That's all right. <laughs> Moving fast. Resolutions. All right. Resolution 2023-10R, Introduction, Public Hearing, and Action tonight. A resolution declaring the necessity of improving the streets of the city of New Carlisle, Ohio by lighting them. Second. A motion by Ms. Eggleston, second by Mr. Lindsay. And an explanation of this ordinance is one of two pieces of legislation um, for the city to assess residents on their um, a certain percentage for, for their frontage for our street lights throughout town. Council, any discussion or questions? And when you're ready, Ms. Barner. Okay. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. That passes 7 0. We have resolution 2023 11 R, introduction, public hearing, and action tonight. A resolution, a resolution consenting to the proposed annexation of 79.136 acres more or less from Bethel Township, Clark County, Ohio, to the city of New Carlisle. So moved. Second. Same motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by Mr. Vice Mayor. Okay. And an explanation of this ordinance is one, it's the first part of uh, many uh, on, the, uh, on the path to annex the 79 uh, acres into the city of New Carlisle. And if you have any questions in, in particular to the annexation, our law director may be able to answer those. Council, any questions? Thanks, sir. When you're ready, Ms. Burner. All right. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. That passes 7 0. Resolution 2023 20 12 R introduction public hearing and action tonight a resolution adopting a statement of services for a proposed annexation of 79.13 acres more or less from Bethel Township Clark County to the city of New Carlisle. Second. Motion by Ms. Eggleston, second by Mr. Lindsay. And an explanation of this ordinance is another phase of it where the city is saying that when we annex this property we will provide police protection fire protection, EMS services, solid waste collection, water distribution, sanitary sewer, roads and streets, zoning, and the community plan. So we'll, we will oversee all those for that new piece of property within the city limits. Thank you. Any questions, Council? And when you're ready, Ms. Barnard. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. That passes <clears throat> zero. Resolution 2023-13R. Introduction, public hearing, and action tonight. A resolution regarding possible incompatible land uses and zoning buffer for a proposed annexation of 79.136 acres, more or less, from Bethel Township, Clark County, to the city of New Palau, Ohio, as required by section 709.023C of the Ohio Revised Code. So moved. Motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by Ms. Eggleston. When you're ready, Mr. Kitka. I'm going to uh, refer this one to our law director who's a little more familiar with this part. So whenever you annex property from a township, if the zoning doesn't match up completely, you have to pass this type of legislation that just says um, any proposed new zoning will be some sort of buffer uh, so that it'll be compatible with the already existing council. All right, thank you. Any questions, council? So this will be zoned what, residential? 
Uh, I think this will be zone PUD in the end, right? Yeah. Uh, it'll be zone PUD. Thank you. Anything else? All right. When you're ready, Ms. Burr. Councilman Cook? Yes. <laughs> Councilman <laughs> Lindsay? Yes. <laughs> Councilman Rodewald. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. That passes seven zero. Moving on to ordinances. Please. All right. So we have four intro tonight and two with action. Our first one is ordinance 2023-42. This was introduced on July 17th, 2023. Public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance supplementing certain appropriations contained in New Carlisle City Ordinance 2022-62. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by Mr. Cook. <clears throat> and for an explanation of this ordinance, I'll refer you to Ms. Harris, our finance director. Thank you. So we are uh, doing the remodeling upstairs at the 101 building for the offices for future, um, for the service director, the planning and manager and more. Um, those were not in our budget discussion last fall, so I needed to submit a supplemental to add those monies back into the, um, to the upstairs. And the flower baskets were another item that was not in the budget, so we talked about it last year. And we've already been able to do the first round of flower baskets at the 14, get rid of about 14,000 out of our current budget on items that we didn't spend but we have to pay before the end of the year to be in line to receive them from next year. Okay. So those flower baskets are basically <coughs> from next year's downtown. And that's the money that we're short. Okay. Council, any questions for Ms. Harris? <coughs> Thank you, Ms. Harris. Thank you. And when you're ready, Ms. Barner. Okay. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman <coughs> Rodewald. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. That passes 7 0. Ordinance 2023 43, introduced on July 17th, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the city manager or the director of public service assi slash assistant city manager to enter into an agreement with the Ohio Department of Transportation for the decorative street light. LED upgrade project CLA SR or State Route 235 and 571 at 0.04.36 01.05 PID number 118645. So moved. Motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by Ms. Eggleston. Good job. And accommodations <laughs> for getting to that. Yes. Uh, and only in one breath. I know. I don't even. <laughs> Mr. Kitko. Uh, an explanation of this ordinance. And just let you know, a PID number is what ODOT assigns all their uh, lead projects. So that number changes. And your CLA numbers are your mile, usually your mile markers on those particular routes. Um, this one I had applied for a uh, grant, partial, well, mostly grant, through the our, uh, TIP, through uh, Clark, County, Clark County Springfield uh, TCC. It was through the uh, brand new program for the carbon reduction and myself ourselves as the city and the city of Springfield were awarded two projects to basically change out old high pressure sodium and mercury vapor lights to LED and mo all our other city lights have already been converted to LED except for our decorative lights. So the project's going to estimate is estimated to be $539,800 with the city uh, putting in about $98,800. And some of those fund, uh, funds possibly will come from our already street lighting assessment and then some other funds for the general fund and then they'll upgrade all those with LED. And then I think we're looking at engineering this next year. It's about a two and a half year process. But this will allow me to sign that agreement to do the project. Okay. Mr. Kicko, will they be replacing just the light bulbs or the entire poles? Uh, it's the globe and the, the, the bulb and the globe uh, combined, not the pole. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes. <coughs> All right. When you're ready, Ms. Barr. Okay. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Rodewald. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. That passes 7 0. 
Our next, uh, the next are read only. So we have ordinance 2023-44, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on August 21st. An ordinance determining to proceed with the improvement of certain public streets within the corporate limits of the city of New Carlisle, Ohio by lighting them. We have ordinance 2023-45, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on August 21st. An ordinance levying assessments for the improvement of certain public streets within the corporate limits of the city of New Carlisle, Ohio by lighting them. Ordinance 2023-46, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on August 21st. An ordinance certifying to the Clark County Auditor and authorizing placement on the tax duplicate certain delinquent utility accounts for collection with real estate taxes. Ordinance 2023-47, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on August 21st. An ordinance certifying to the Clark County Auditor and authorizing placement on the tax duplicate certain uncollected weed and or grass cutting fees for collection with real estate taxes and would you like me to read other business no, please. all right other business additional city business tonight city council public hearing zoning classification change for 336 ohio and 610 608 606 604 west madison street clark county land bank and habitat home builds and City Council action on the zoning classification change for 336 Ohio and 610, 608, 606, 604 West Madison Street, Clark County Land Bank and Habitat Home Builds. And on Monday, August 21st, 2023, during the, regular, during the regularly scheduled City Council meeting. So tonight, I guess you guys know what you're doing, right? Right. The, the the way I read it was is tonight we're going to do the you know the part that says tonight, and then the second part, the city action, is going to be at the next meeting. Okay. So. so yeah. So. All right. Thank you, Miss Meyer. So, Mr. Kitko, do you have anything that you need to go over as far as this uh, the zoning classification change? Um, I do not, other than just uh, changing them to their uh, residential uh, components. Okay, so then there's no actual action as far as from us tonight. It's just a public hearing. Right. So tonight action. Let me make sure. Do we vote on that tonight or is it we vote on that the next meeting? That, that's the way I read it was there's action at the next meeting. Okay. <clears throat> no, it's just a public hearing on those said lots right mm -hmm. but i'm saying there's i mean there's if there's nothing to go over i guess that's just basically saying that if there was someone here to have questions then they would have done it if there was no one here to think to do so uh you may uh if you would Janelle Zimmerman, 219 Prentice Drive. Um, I had a question about when they um, bring in the that new section. That's it's some of it's agricultural now, and it's going to be changed to You're housing. Talking about the new housing development. Yeah. No. It'll so be the people who live there currently, where it's zoned agriculture does that mean if they have agriculture animals like goats or chickens or anything like that or horses that they won't be allowed to have them anymore yeah. well can I answer that? From, from, from a previous meeting the city manager said that they would not be included in that annexation that he found some law or something and correct me if i'm wrong you too mr kiko and mr jeffries that they would be <clears throat> first he told us that it couldn't be an island in the city but then he told us at a later meeting <coughs> that it would not affect them they would still remain in the township our our city or our land would go around their property they would remain in the township everything around them would be in the city so this zoning on that land up there would not affect them at all they'd still be able to do whatever they're doing now and if I'm not mistaken, they had chickens and I think a cow or something up there. 
is what they told us okay. at that meeting. And they would they be the there. only property affected? It, their property will not be affected. Okay. Yeah, just it, it the will one remain. property that is there on Addison, New Carlisle, yeah. they will not be affected whatsoever yeah. in this whole project. Okay. Because I would remain, think that would be awful if you bought a home the out township. there thinking you could, you know, have animals like that and all of a sudden you're in a city and you have to get rid of them. So yeah. I just wondered how that worked. Thank you. Yep, Mr. Lindsay Mill. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. sir. I appreciate that. Yes, sir. <laughs> so uh, no one else is here to go over um, any of that. So I guess we will uh, move on to uh, open discussion. Council has anything? Okay. Um, Howard, this is probably for more for you. Um, why is there not a sidewalk on the other side of the piece? I uh, can't tell you. There's one on the other side. I um, <laughs> uh, have, have no idea. It, honestly, it never really come to me or anybody ever said anything or just there was just never one there. But there's crossings at both sides of P. So maybe back in the day they decided they didn't want to do it. I'd have to check right away. Maybe there's a right away issue, but I don't know currently. Okay, because um, I've got a friend that lives in there are people on, in wheelchairs that it's very awkward for them to have to cross the street, go up the lake, and then cross the street again. Can I add on? Mm -hmm. Can I mm -hmm. say something on that? No, no, no. With that subject, because I, I know what she's talking about, that would be, so say if we looked into it, there was no reason that there couldn't be a sidewalk there. It would be the houses in the front that would be responsible to put that in, correct? Yeah, normally the house the house is to put the sidewalk in, but I would think because it's been so right. It's an it's obviously an older house. It wasn't a new, yeah, new yeah, build, yeah. but I would think if it was the desire to put one in, mm -hmm. then we would do it at the city. Okay, I was just that's curious. right. And, and that could have been the reason there never was. There's no frontage. Yeah. So I, I'm 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 not sure. Yeah. There's, <laughs> thank you. Um, there's another wreck on the curb. Your house get hit again? No, I walked out this time. Oh, wow. Um, the second wreck, they moved the utility pole from the curb into my yard. And I wasn't real happy with that at the time, but I'm real happy with it now. Could it hit the pole? It would have hit the pole again and got my house again. <clears throat> um, but I did some checking and the state won't put them in because it would be in the city if it's in the city limits. But can the city put like a rumble strip just on the northbound lane by the lift 25 mile an hour sign? So like pavement marking style, there's a possibility for that. Um, by putting those in, what what would that have done to the, the two incidences we've had? Well, the last two were both drunk, so it would have at least them up. Maybe. Maybe. Um, no, usually not. So basically, uh, pavement marking rumble strips are for speeders. Um, or or were, um, it's usually not for that. We had an ICE incident, which was a semi driver, and an OVI. We have a flashing 25 mile an hour sign. Uh, there's The only way I could do it. Well, there's nothing for an OBI that I know of that will stop that person. I mean, if, if it was ended up being a desire to be put in, you'd be listening to that all night long with 10,000 cars. It just from my point of view. You guys have owned that. We've owned it since Okay. And how many times has it happened since you guys? Why? 
<laughs> Do you have room in your backyard to pick the house up, move it back, <laughs> and then put your own brick wall up? I, uh, I mean, I, I know you, this won't be a popular comment. I think it's just it, it is. It's one of those situations. It is what it is. It's on a turn. I don't think you're ever going to be able to stop it unless you were to put a guard around in front of the house. Well, with the guard Right, so I mean, it's it's just an unfortunate design. Design, and then yeah, they would hit the guardrail and put them in the air, and then she'd land in her living room where she sits and watches TV. Right. It's, it's not a good situation. If you're looking at traffic control devices to um, warn drivers of corners, <clears throat> speed, we have you know we pretty much have that out there. If a, if a traffic engineer was to study this, they'll be like, well, who was it? Who's committing these, these infractions? And they're, and they're going to look at it as going to be an under the influence or something like that. I don't know of a traffic control device that stops that. I mean, that, that's the whole thing with this. You know, I'm sorry. What, you know, what, what do we put in there that will, you know, for sure stop this, you know, 100%? And I really don't have an answer for it. I mean, the guardrail, but the guardrail is going to have to go all the way around so it, it guides them past all the homes plus you'd have like i think that i hear this here you mentioned where it comes down it ramps up and that there's your ramp on, on a guardrail so it is it's tricky on the corner um it's not saying that the pavement marking part can't can't go in there um i just have to get with someone and just see you know what would be appropriate to be well before the curve and at that point it really won't matter do you put it at the curve, something we could look at. I would say too much. Put it right before that 25 miles before it I don't think this can be done, but the only other option I can think of is to put the uh, steel casters or holes in the ground, fill them full of cement. Like you know, bollards? Pardon me? Bollards? Yeah. And, but then you'd have to put those, what, every four foot, five foot. So a car, a little car couldn't get between them. And then do you really want seven or eight of those in your yard? Well, I don't think you wouldn't want them in your driveway, but the uh, and Bruce wouldn't want them in his parking lot because then he wouldn't have access to it. it you get the fancy you know, ones that go down in the ground when you want to drive. Yeah, and you can push a button at night when, <laughs> when you know when the wrecks are, or put sensors on them, so if a car heads that way, they just pop up. Uh, but all kidding aside, I. I really don't see any solution for that curve, that curb, curb, not curb. Uh, you know, if you would put something up and somebody hit it and got hurt or killed, it'd be suing you. So I mean, it's like, like the mayor said, it's just a sad situation. It's pretty much what what it is. You know, when they built built the laid out that road and they built the houses and the buildings along there. They wasn't planning on having cars and people not knowing how to drive them. You know, if it was a horse and buggy, the horse knew not to run up there and it'd just go home if the driver was drunk. But the car, they haven't made that car yet. I don't think, have they? And the other thing they is, there's a clear zone of usually two and a half feet from the front of curb that you're not allowed to put anything, as in like our decorative poles. That's the closest they, they could ever be. So there is a small clear zone, even within the corporation limits, that you can you can place items. It gives that that curve plus a little bit of room for a car to be able to get off the road and be able to come back on. Okay. Anything else, Chris? What I'm saying is, um, when the Hensley Park sign came down, we had discussed keeping the founders in the sign. Is there anything you guys done with that? All right, we'll have to look into it. 
I, I remember some some discussion about trying to get all the signs uh, into one and then maybe putting a smaller sign, I think, up as a dedication sign. Yeah. But I don't think putting the big, big sign and all the others back up yeah. uh, was really uh, uh, the first part of, of getting that done. Look at that. I thought we talked about Sorry. that and agreed to do that. You didn't hear me, did you? Mm -hmm. I thought council had talked about that and, and council agreed to to keep the 18, yeah. whatever it is. I don't remember. Oh, I yeah, to keep that there along with the new the new uh, signs. Yeah, I'll look in and see. Obviously, I haven't went out to see the sign and, and what its material is you know is it is it rotten from what it, what it was up there before it got hit so i know there was some rot to the bottom boards we had to get them refastened to the big the foundation part of it or no the, the sign part that was hanging on the on the mm -hmm. six by sixes I mean, this one was not part of the hensley park sign it was attached later i think by some things. yeah off to the side off to the side mm -hmm. yeah I'll take a look. Thank you, sir. Anything else, Peg? Um, we're getting Main Street Associates done in September. Uh, tentatively on the 19th. Yeah, I sent an email out to everybody. You did? Oh, you didn't get that? Did. Yeah. I didn't get it. Hmm. You did? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what? I'm coming. Think about it. It might have been just you and advice on that one was it I thought it went to everybody and just, and just to share it because then if there was any comments and you could get comments back and forth I guess yeah but I September 18th is the tentative date with the September 11th signage going up and that's if weather plays nice and everything else I did not get your email okay I just checked I have nothing from you Oh, we'll get them put back in. It depends on when they stripe that that we may have to wait till spring, obviously, to get them put in. Okay. <clears throat> and you'll go back with the parking spaces again. They may be putting it in in the project, awesome. and then we're looking to add the additional lines afterwards. Okay. okay thank you. Thank you, sir. Anything else? All right. Mr. Mayor, sir, uh, I need to go into executive session to conserve the employment of the public in Florida. Second. 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 Second by Mr. Rogel. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Uh, yes. Councilman Rodwell. Yes. Seven zero. All right, so we'll take a, just a quick couple members to the executive <laughs> session. Um, I don't know if there will be any um, business afterwards. I, just, I don't know, unfortunately. Uh, so you're welcome to hang around and wait outside afterwards. You can come back in when we come into regular session. Mr. Mr. Mayor, move to go back into regular session. Second. Motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by Mr. Vice Mayor to go back into regular session. All right, Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Roadwell? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Thank you. We are now. Thank you. We're back in regular session. Mr. Uh, Mayor, if there's no further discussion or anything to discuss, I move that we adjourn. Any other discussion? Second by Ms. Hagel. <laughs> Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Roadwell? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Motion to adjourn, accepted 7-0. All right, thank you very much. Have a good evening.